Welcome to Just Another Hunting Podcast. This is Steve with Mountain to Coast Outdoors in collaboration with Joseph from Way Out West Adventures. We dive deep into the world of hunting, exploring tactics, gear, and unforgettable stories from the field. Join us each week as we interview seasoned experts and passionate enthusiasts who share insights and experiences to help you enhance your hunting skills. Whether you're a novice seeking guidance or a veteran hunter looking for new challenges, this is your go-to resource for all things hunting. Tune in each week to step up your game and to connect with the community who shares your love for the great outdoors. All right, guys, uh, episode one for us, I guess. First go at this podcast thing. Uh, Joseph and I are on the mountain spring bear hunting, uh, day three, uh, second day of days we can actually hunt. So far, it's been pretty good. We saw a bear last night around five, and uh, Joseph picked up a bear around 10.30 this morning. A little too small, though, so we decided to pass. We're just going to sit here for another, uh, I don't know, couple days if that's what it takes to fill a tag, and then we're planning on heading up this ridge behind us to look into some new country we haven't seen before. So, yeah. Yeah, we've seen five bears in this three drainage, these little three drainages in the last two years. It was where we were last year at the end of our season. So it's got a mixture of, it's east facing slope. It's got a mixture of pine, burnt pine, and a bunch of these whatever those are, but the grass is green. And if you, that's where you're finding them is in the, definitely in where the, the grassy lush patches. <clears throat> Once they find one of those, they help, they hold up. That one right here held up there for probably two hours. We could have easily have killed it, but I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to shoot a German shepherd. <laughs> yeah yeah so we uh we brought the rafts on this trip too but one thing we've you know learned i guess the hard way like all these trips is last year we were a week later and the snow was a lot lower and the river was gin clear until the last day or two of the trip so we were like shoot let's get some rafts for the next year's trip and we can raft all the way down to this spot which is several miles from where we started from but the river due to all this snow melt and this hill being completely you know bald of snow basically the, the river is just raging so we only made it like what two miles maybe down yeah. river in the rafts before we were like you know what it's not worth it it's way too dangerous i dropped into some nasty rapids took on quite a bit of water i think joseph probably did the same in a few spots so i was almost gonna head right for the <laughs> i was panicking <laughs> the river was flowing so fast um, that could have been bad. Yeah, and there's so many, so many corners that you just don't know what's around the other, the other no. end of that corner. And uh, we we came around that one left corner, and luckily there was enough um, slow water on the left that we were able to get out like literally just in time because there was a stretch of rapids that were wicked for a couple hundred yards at least. I don't think we, I don't think I would have made it through. I think I would have fell out. Yeah, I think I would have probably fallen out with you. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy because I've spent quite a few years now rowing a drift boat and feel pretty comfortable on the water. But in those little single man rafts, when you drop into those rapids, that they just they're they're so flexible that you're just riding it out. You're not cutting through it. So, like you literally can't see. <laughs> there was a couple where like you were felt like you were on deadliest catch. Like you were in the bottom of, of a swell. And you're like, well, hope this goes over well. <laughs> Next yeah. thing you know, you pop out and you're in another one. Yeah, that one was like. 200 yards of just solid rollers rollers <laughs> nasty dude. big boulders i don't know if i would have made it <laughs> so uh we left uh we left my raft down low and a few other pieces of gear down low and we brought joseph's raft with us because this country you can't really see it that well but there's it's huge and there's a lot of drainages that are ripping so we figured we'd bring one just in case we saw a bear across one of these smaller drainages we could get across and then you know kill it and get back um, but yeah, we got the, we got the teepee with us in the stove and we have what, seven days of food left. We got two bear tags and two wolf tags. This drainage treated us well last year. We, we filled a tag in here and, and saw several bears. So we figured we would come back and it's, it's been good to us so far again. So 
-hmm. It has, just not this size. Yeah, yeah. I think the bear, the bear we saw yesterday, um, I would definitely shoot it. I think, I think Joseph probably would too. Yeah, it was, it was good. Um, interesting though, that was like, like a chocolate colored bear, but it's his whole face it was white, was white. I, like it had those mites. Yeah. Um, they, but a guy in, in Oregon told me that they get those mites in the dens, uh, during the, uh, their denning hibernation period. And they must just eat them alive or something, or they just keep rubbing themselves. I don't quite know, but it, it was <laughs> very, very white and gray. Yeah, it's you can't miss it. This one didn't have it. No, that one had a beautiful coat, but just small. And I'm definitely personally still learning how to judge bears. They, they always, uh, maybe I just get too excited. They look good to me, but. I think the thing is you just gotta calm down. Yeah. Like we sat and watched it for two hours dang near. So, and he's still up there somewhere. We think he's in this group of trees and because he hasn't left it. So he's probably bedded up there. Yeah, I say one thing I've learned about hunting spring bear too so far over the last couple of years is uh, just being patient. If you get in a country that has green grass and it looks like it should hold, in my opinion, mule deer, um, there's probably bears around and it, that seems to be the case. We're finding bears in spots that I would definitely personally be looking for mule deer in in the fall. Well, we saw mule deer. Yeah, I mean, there are some up behind us here at this this highest ridge. There's a couple of mule deer up there. Um, but the bears, the bears definitely seem to like this steep, nasty, rocky country for sure. So that's pretty much what we look for when we're e-scouting is stuff like that. And another thing that I've learned kind of is I was always kind of targeting these the south slopes. You, in theory, the grass should be growing the best on those slopes, but we've consistently seen quite a few bears on this east facing stuff. So that's also definitely been helpful. <clears throat> yeah, we saw one last year on the southern exposures, but all of them were on more of the northern and eastern facing slopes last year. And the weather was much the winter was stayed around a lot longer. So then when they come out and we have a problems last year cause they'd come out and they would just disappear. And we think that they were just going out of their den and then back in their den. Cause it's not like they could keep going up cause it was loaded with snow. So you would see them and then they'd be gone. Yeah, last year we saw I think six bears and the only bear that gave us a, a shot was, was the one that one. we shot. Yeah. All the other ones were out and then gone on the move feeding away from us or side hill and they were just constantly on the looking move. like they're looking for grass because it wasn't really out yet yeah and the two we've seen so far that you know in these two days have been on the slope that they pop out on for that one was probably a good hour and a half to two hours last night yeah and this one was out for a solid two hours before it bedded down so we think we timed it a little better this year based on the, the snow melt so that'll hopefully pay off this trip for us but time will tell i'm i'm excited to get up over this ridge and look into some new country but we also need to be patient and we know there's a couple bears here and see if we can't fill one tag i think that was our achilles heel last year i think if we just stuck it out and waited when we saw a bear instead of moving constantly and being impatient i think we would have got more more bears if we just you know he's here we want to shoot him you know, just take your time and wait. Well, one thing I think that kind of screwed us up last year a little bit too was on the other side of this ridge, we, Joseph glassed up a nice jet black, but then the following morning, our intentions were to try to kill that jet black. Yeah. And I ended up seeing a bear across the main drainage, what we were calling the salad bowl that looked really good as well, that bear. So we were thinking Cody and Steve could stay behind and but, shoot that jet black, right? Cody went with us. Or Steve, yeah, Steve was going to stay Steve. behind and shoot that jet black. And we were going to raft across and try to shoot that bear in the salad bowl. And we ended up not killing either one of them. And then we got impatient and we never went back and really checked on that salad bowl bear. For, we, well, we went back for a couple hours, yeah. but we ended up leaving him, give, kind of giving up on him and coming way into here, which did pay off, but we only filled one tag. And I agree, we probably could have filled 
at least two tags if we just would have yeah. been a little bit more patient. We knew the bears were there. They weren't going anywhere. But this year, that's the plan. We're going to be patient. And uh, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. We yeah. know there's, I mean, we know there's a black, there's a black bear in here too. We haven't seen him yet. I'm pretty sure he's still in here. But so, I mean, technically, there should be three bears that we've seen. Yeah, different, three different bears for sure. And there's probably more, there's probably honestly. more. Yeah. I mean, that night we saw the three in here last year. We saw that jet black early in the morning around 10. And then we moved up to this knob to get in range to shoot. And Joseph picked up another bear, a separate bear, um, and one one drainage over. But he fed up so fast, he got to like 800 yards. We had we had no shot, and we were literally packing up our stuff. It was like six ish. Yeah. And another bear popped out of the bottom, like right below us, at 450 ish yards. So for some reason, this drainage definitely holds them. It does. Yeah, they like it. And there were elk in here last year. There were mule deer up there. There were mule deer here and another pocket of them behind us. And yeah, this was the area was loaded with, with mule deer last year. I don't know where they are, but they, it was loaded completely. Three different pockets of mule deer. <clears throat> no wolves yet. Yeah, no wolves I yet. Haven't heard any. Last year we heard them, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Multiple occasions. And we saw some really big tracks too, but. We haven't heard them yet. I'm sure we will eventually if we're here long enough. Especially the more we go that way. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, we're, we're pretty deep. As deep as I've gone if I shoot something. Yeah. I mean, what we're... Well, we're the same as last year. But if we go up over that base, over that, that ridge, it's... <sighs> we think we have a good plan, though. We have some contractor garbage bags if we get one back here. Um, it's getting cool in the morning and the evenings it's, it gets pretty warm during the daytime, but our plan is to, if we knock one down in the next day or so, get it boned out, get it down in the Creek, submerge it in those contractor bags, keep it in the water and it should, it should last quite a while. So I think that's going to be our plan if we knock one down and we still have five or six days left. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it all goes well, but I'm, I'm still new at this whole backcountry thing and learning it. It's definitely, uh, different. You just can't <clears throat> drive over there and shoot that bear. Yeah. The amount of effort it takes to get over to shoot that bear. It's, it's a lot. Oh, it's at least a couple hours. Yeah. And the calories you're burning and the water you're drinking. And then you gotta go fetch your water. I mean, it, the cool thing is there's water down in the bottom, so you can always get your water there. But it's still a lot of work. Yeah, it's it's just it's 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 hard, but man, it does pay off to just be out here and you can just sit. There ain't no one around. Yeah, something about waking up in the teepee with a fire going, and I love drinking coffee. So having coffee up here is nice in the morning. It's crisp. Beautiful, but it is a lot of work. I think we, we both packed up around eight liters of water in here, seven or eight days of food, the raft, the rifle, all this camera equipment, spotting scopes. I mean, we're sharing some stuff to try to minimize weight, but I'm pretty sure my pack was at least 70 pounds coming up this ridge and Joseph's was all of that as well. So it is a ton of work, but um, it is nice to be up here and literally walk a hundred yeah. yards 200 yards from our shelter and we're glass in this huge basin so yeah when, once it's the work getting up here once you're up here it you, you could chill out we got water like right here so we know that next time if we were to come in here we know there's water right here we don't have to pack so much water up which will be helpful yeah and that's just things you learn hunting the same area when you go in the new area new terrain you just don't know that so you have to pack the water yeah you, you got to suffer until you know yeah finding water up here is a is a game changer i mean i don't know what eight liters of water weighs but it's got to be i'd say 10 to 15 pounds somewhere in that ballpark so it's the heaviest of, out of all your gear <laughs> yeah by far and it also takes up a lot of space in your pack so you know finding water up here like last year would have been easy to stay up here because there was snow 
Yeah. We could have filled our black contractor bags with snow, let it sit out in the sunlight through the middle of the day and, and had plenty of water. But now that we know that this, there must be a spring in this basin because that creek is running. It's raging. You can hear it from here. And there's no snow. And there's no snow in here. Exactly. Yeah. So next year we won't have to pack nearly as much water in here if we decide to come back to this spot, which will be nice. Yeah. But I definitely think sharing a gun and I think if you're going to do rafts and you're not going to float a river, I think two rafts per dude per one raft per two guys is, is your, is what you want to shoot for. I think if you came in with four guys and one raft, you'd be bumming. It would take quite a while to cross. Yeah. And I would say if you're going to bring one raft, bring more paracord than you think you yes. need to get that raft. You might be able to get two guys in the raft to get across. I think it, it is doable, but it would, you'd probably be getting pretty wet. But if you had, you know, what, 200 feet of paracord at a minimum. Well, yeah. And you got to think if you're crossing, you're always going to cross, you're going to end up way downstream. Yeah. So if you do cross in one shot with two guys, but maybe you leave a backpack behind or something or your backpacks or whatever. Now, when you cross again, you're going to be even further down. Yeah. So, yeah, having a couple hundred feet of paracord would be the way to go if you were going to shuttle stuff because the river just gets, as the snow melts, obviously the river just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it gets really wide. I mean, I don't think a hundred feet of paracord would do you any good. No, you I wouldn't, think you need you more. Have, yeah, near enough. If you're hunting next to a big river. Yeah. Yeah, you would need more than a hundred feet. <sighs> and I would say too, one thing that we've noticed is you got to get off of any main trail system i'd say at least a mile buffer it seems to be like the spot where once we've gotten that far off of any sort of established area that you start to see more animals which is i guess you think a no-brainer but it's showing itself here for sure because we haven't seen any bears really that way at all besides across the river yeah besides across which there's there's no established trail over there so nope that makes sense you'd have to cross swim or raft across to get over there so that's probably why they're a little easier to see yep and even the guides don't use them so yeah you got a one up there definitely <laughs> yeah but anyway we uh we've thought about kind of starting a podcast for quite a while now we figured um this would be a, a good place to start kind of a i guess a intro to what we have planned We've got a lot of hunts coming up. Obviously, we got spring bear going right now. We've both got spring bear tags, and his Joseph's son has a spring bear tag in Oregon. We've got applications in from Montana for deer and elk. Um, we got Washington elk, deer, fall bear. Got a lot of stuff coming up. So I think when we hunt together on all of our trips, we're probably going to do some more podcasts like this on the mountain just to kind of give you guys an idea of what we're up to anyway. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Hopefully keep my body in shape enough to do it as long as I can. Yeah. But it's hard though. Yeah. Both of us train pretty consistently, I'd say. And, uh, man, there is nothing like putting on a 70 or 80 pound backpack and hike, hiking these hills, all the running and, box step ups and all that stuff. It definitely helps, I'm sure, with mobility and maybe preventing some injuries, but man, nothing feels like that backpack hiking up these mountains. That's for dang sure. No, it's, it's tough. Yeah. It is tough. And we're packing pretty, for what we have, we're packing pretty ultralight stuff. I mean, we got Dyneema Shelter, Dyneema Tarp, the rifles, like eight, eight and a half pounds and the rafts only what six pounds i mean most of our gear our sleeping bags and our pads is all all that stuff's ultralight food wise we're running about two pounds a day per bag about three thousand to thirty five hundred calories and i think we i can't imagine go much going much leaner on food because yeah we're skimping we're kind of skimping we're not even really hi hiking that much at the moment i was hungry yesterday so we probably might have cut that a little too thin on the on the calorie intake for what we're doing but a lot of planning a lot of preparation definitely goes a long ways when you're planning to do something like this 
Yep. One more thing I would say to you about this kind of country is, you know, when we first got in here, we all had the kind of mindset to shoot, keep our shots as close as possible. Obviously, you don't want to wound an animal, but I would say, in my opinion, that you should have a rifle that has the energy and the capability of shooting around 500 yards, if not slightly further, if you're comfortable with that, because this country is freaking huge. 500 is, isn't even... <laughs> That's just like the, the beginning. Oh, yeah. Look at all these elk right here. Oh, wow. Oh, we just had three elk come up over this ridge by right next to us. The one in the back's honed in on us pretty good. Yeah, we smelt them. Yeah, we knew they were in here. We knew where they were in here because we could smell them. They've been below us for two days and we haven't seen them. That goes to show you back to that whole patience thing. That's what I was telling him. I, the thing about this type of area, country, I was up in Washington with my son and literally a huge black bear, it was before the season started, just popped up in front of me. And that, that could easily happen here. You just never know. Yeah, for sure. There's so many side finger drainages and ridges, so many folds they can be bedded in. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. What are they, probably 100 and... If that, yeah, 150. The other one in the back, she... She's on to us. She's on to us. Yeah. All right, guys, that's a wrap on episode one. We apologize for the strange ending. We were sitting on the mountain glassing for bears and uh, a group of four elk came up over the saddle and distracted the crap out of us while we were recording. So anyway, that's what happened there. But more importantly, we do have a giveaway going with this spring bear mini series that we just dropped on our YouTube channels. Part one and part two are now live. It's free to enter. All you have to do is be subscribed to the Mountain to Coast Outdoors YouTube channel and be subscribed to the Way Out West Adventures YouTube channel and then leave a comment on either video. That's gonna give you one entry. The giveaway package includes multiple items from Go Hunt, like an insider membership, titanium mug, glassing pad, and a few other items. Dark Energy tossed in a power bank. Seek Outside tossed in a $100 gift card to their website and then Mountain Tough Fitness tossed in a one year membership that'll give you access to everything they offer. Uh, Mountain to Coast Outdoors is also tossing in uh, kind of a swag pack. So the winner that's selected will be able to go to the website and pick a hat, t-shirt and sweatshirt of their choice. And we'll make sure we get that stuff made and included in the giveaway package. We can't thank you guys enough for tuning in to our YouTube channels and now our podcast. We hope you enjoyed episode one. And we'll catch you next, next week on episode two.